हेलो एंड गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू दिस लाइव सेशन एंड द मैराथन सेशन एंड द रिविजनरी सेशन ऑफ जीएसटी गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस लाइव सेशन आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड टू लॉन्च दिस मैराथन लेक्चर्स एक्सक्लूसिवली फॉर सीएमए स्टूडेंट्स एंड यस आई विल बी कवरिंग द एंटायर स्टडी मैट ऑफ द सीएमए इंस्टीट्यूट and i'm really really happy for this particular session good evening mr pediwal good evening suyash sakshi ekta sai himani kalyani anuraj nishant ujjal ghosh chirag himani zainab khan jyotika rohan kadam good evening good evening good evening guys and yes 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 after much request of all of you and I, yes even i was excited to launch this marathon session of gst and yes the marathon session of gst is right here in front of all of you good evening jatin good evening sushmita saket sakshi tanmay good evening everyone once please confirm am i audible and visible to all of you kya aap mujhe sun pa rahe hain kya aap mujhe dekh pa rahe hain please confirm kar dijiye in the chat box so that i can start this marathon session as early as possible and yes guys exams are round the corner only a few days to go for your examination the reverse counting has started and now we cannot leave we cannot afford to leave any stone unturned we have to pull up our socks and we have to conquer cm intermediate direct and indirect taxation examination and why only direct and indirect taxation we have to conquer accountancy we have to conquer costing we have to conquer law we have to conquer all the subjects of cma and that is what we are here for Good evening, good evening, good evening, guys. Hi, Harshad. Yes, Ujjal Ghosh. Sir, games kariyega points wala. Yes, Anuraj. बहुत अच्छा याद दिलाया. I will have games of points. Okay, that is an amazing, amazing, amazing um, concept. Yes, I'll do everything in this live session, guys. We are going to make this live session as lively, as entertaining as possible, and we are going to revise GST in a very, very short span of time. And guys. particularly a very big disclaimer to all of you i'll be picking up those topics more which have been repeating in the past examination so that their frequency of revision is increased and guys please um whenever you are traveling whenever you are going from one place to another place have your earphones around the corner with you handy uh, so that you can hear to this marathon lectures again and again and again more you hear to this marathon uh, lectures more you hear to these uh, series of marathons better it will be for you for grasping all the concepts and yes i will be able to complete all the important concepts um in a very short span of time for entire syllabus of gst kirti batra good evening yes let the fun begin okay so guys the schedule of marathon will be uh, monday to friday daily 9 pm monday to friday daily 9 pm i'll be taking the marathon lecture for about say 2 hours or 1 and 1/2 hour depending upon the concept which we have started we will um, uh, close the concept in the same class so the class will be variable and um, uh, you know it might range from 1.5 uh, hours to 2 hours and yes no lengthy classes no classes of 8 hours or something like that if you want to watch the entire marathon together you can anytime watch it on youtube it will be live on youtube it will be saved on youtube you can watch it anytime and yes the best part is i'll be teaching purely in english so all my students who are from south india and who want to um uh, really you know uh, take benefit of these marathon lectures they can easily do it because it will be very very beneficial for the people from south india now cma final students will be wondering sir whether these classes will be useful for us also absolutely yes cma final students <clears throat> the concepts the um uh, the chapters of cma final are almost almost similar to cma intermediate of course cma intermediate forms the basic of um direct and indirect taxation for cma final students also so these marathon lectures are very relevant for cma final students also so what are we going to start today guys today we are going to start both old and new syllabus both syllabus uh, are be, are being covered in this particular marathon lecture so what are we going to start today guys we are going to start basic concepts of gst today a small chapter weightage in the examination say about 5 marks okay 3 marks short note 4 marks short note or 5 marks short note of course very very important from an mcq standpoint mcqs are going to come from this chapter for sure a small chapter but this chapter is going to set the context for the entire gst syllabus 
So if you falter in this particular chapter, you will be faltering in all the chapters of GST. So this chapter should be hands on, should be on your tips. This chapter should be absolutely fluent with each one of you. So let's begin our Tayari Jeet Ki. Let's rock the next attempt of CMA GST. And yes, guys, DT Marathon is already saved on the channel. You can go to the playlist and watch the DT Marathon, which is already saved uh, on this channel. So before I start the session, let me check. Guys, how's the Josh? Please comment in the section, in the comment section. How's the Josh? How's the Josh, guys? Please comment in the comment section. Yes, test series are already going on. Test series, you can, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, access on my WhatsApp channel. They are already going on. Guys, how's the Josh? All right. Mr. Periwal says, Josh says, hi, sir. Yes. Anshu Kumari, Harsha says, hi, sir. Tanmay. Tanmay has given a, um, uh, you know, whopping skyrocketing uh, pie diagram. Good. Darshan says, hi, sir. Nishant, hi. Abhishek, hi, sir. All right. On the peak of Everest. <laughs> Itna hi. Ki keyboard toot jata hai. <laughs> Kirti Vatra, hi, sir. Hemkesh, hi, sir. Definitely. Very, very, very high. So, guys, let's start our marathon lecture of GST. One of the most interesting taxes which the country has. And one of the most scoring paper which you can ever imagine very less course content and very hugely marked in your examination so beautifully drafted uh, course curriculum by the institute of cost accountants of india and if you do it well then you are bound to clear your examination very well yes a very big advantage for new syllabus students 50 50 marks dt and idt respectively yes dt is so vast so vast that you know you can compensate its um uh, it's it's uh, uh, lacking in gst so that's a trick which i'm going to teach you in a short while so first of all let's start our chapter of basic concepts the most important concept that we are going to study today is differentiation between indirect taxation and direct taxation. Guys, one very, very expected question. Examiner is going to ask this question. Examiner might ask this question as a short note, as, as a four marks note or a three marks question. What is the difference between indirect taxation and direct taxation? To enumerate the difference, I'm going to take you to a chart. Okay, this is the difference between indirect taxation and direct taxation. Indirect taxation. First of all, direct taxation, direct taxation, indirect taxation, the taxpayer pays the taxes to the government directly. The taxpayer pays the taxes to the government directly. Yes, I am running my coaching institute. I earn from my coaching institute. Whatever earnings I have, I have to pay direct taxes, income tax on that coaching revenue. I will pay directly to government of India. This is known as direct tax. I'm directly going to pay the taxes to government of India. This is known as direct tax. So the direct tax, indirect tax, only two people are involved, the taxpayer and the government of India. However, in indirect taxation, there are three people involved. One, the taxpayer. Second, the intermediary who's going to collect tax from me. And he's going to remit the tax to the government of India. The first and basic difference between direct taxation and indirect taxation. The first and basic difference in case of direct taxation, the taxpayer pays government the taxes directly. However, in case of indirect taxation, the taxpayer pays taxes to an intermediary and intermediary after that remits the money to the government of India. This intermediary might be the seller of goods and services. I'll give you a very clear example, guys, and a very, very simple exam uh, example. All right, so yes, that's Mr. Ram. Mr. Ram earns money, and that is government of India. Mr. Ram earns income, and on his income, he has to pay income tax to government of India. Mr. Ram pays income tax to government of India. Okay, this is an example of direct taxation. The taxpayer is paying taxes to government of India directly. This is an example of direct taxation. Now coming on to indirect taxation. In case of indirect taxation, Mr. Ram, there's no income tax in this case. Mr. Ram wants to buy some commodity. He goes to market. 
Mr. Ram wants to buy some commodity. Maybe Mr. Ram wants to buy some soap, some toiletries for his kitchen, some um, uh, cosmetic products. Mr. Ram wants to buy. Mr. Ram wants to buy some things from market. He goes to the seller of those products. He wants to buy a jeans. He wants to buy a pair of uh, a t-shirt or a jeans or or shoes or sandals, anything and everything. Okay. So Mr. Ram. Okay. Okay. The screen is not visible. Yes. Now the screen is visible. Okay. I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay. I'll zoom out a little bit. Yes. I can see that screen is not visible clearly. Okay. Now the screen will be visible to all of you. And now, yes, much better, much better. All right. Now visibility is clear. Perfect. Yes, sir. So Mr. Ram wants to buy something from the seller. Mr. Ram wants to buy a pair of jeans. Mr. Ram wants to buy um, shoes, clothing. He, he needs to buy anything from the market. He goes to the seller. He asks the seller, what is the price of this particular, say, jeans? The seller tells him that these um, uh, jeans are for 2,000 rupees. Mr. Ram says to the seller, hey, please take 2,000 rupees and give me the jeans. Seller tells Mr. Ram, hey, 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 look, 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 Mr. Ram. Jeans are 20,000 rupees, but over them, there is a GST which you have to pay at the rate of 10%. This is 2,200 is the total price which you have to pay to me. Mr. Ram says, but who collects GST? Seller says, I collect GST and I remit it to government of India. This is the law which the country has, okay? On consumption, on consumption of goods and services, you have to pay an additional amount to government of India, which is known as GST or uh, in, in broader sense, indirect taxes. So what is the first difference between direct and indirect taxes? Direct taxes are paid directly to government of India. Direct taxes are on the basis of the incomes which are earned and on the basis of incomes which are earned, direct taxes are paid to government of India and indirect taxes are paid not directly to government of India. They are paid through an intermediary and direct ta indirect taxes are paid on consumption of commodities, on consumption of products and services. Uh, indirect taxation are not paid on the incomes. So that is the most important differentiating factor between direct taxes and indirect taxes. If you are able to appreciate the difference, please write yes, sir, on the comment section. And please, guys, let's, let's keep up. You know, likes in this particular um, uh, session. So we need some like. Hit that like button, and and uh, I'm very serious now. I'll be I'll be you know asking for lives uh, time and again. Yes, yes. I'm coming on regressive and progressive. I'm coming on that. There is a repetition. Yes, yes. I got the point. Yes, sir. Chirag says a yes. Yes, guys. Guys, let's make this session as interactive as possible. Let's make this session interactive. The idea of taking these sessions on YouTube is just and just that this particular session becomes interactive. This session becomes um, uh, very, very um, uh, fluent for you as well as for me. That is the idea of taking these sessions live. Yes. Yes. Please increase the volume. Guys, I am on highest volume. I cannot increase the volume further. So I think you have to increase the uh, volume of your instrument. Yes. Okay. So this is the... Uh, concept of direct taxation and indirect taxation. Indirect taxation happens through an intermediary. Indirect taxation happens through a person. Um, a direct taxation is, is uh, directly from the person to the government of India. That is the differentiating factor number one. Now, now let us come on to the chart, guys. Please mark, please mark in your book. And um, uh, this book is your Institute of Cost Accountants of India book. So you can refer to the cost of, cost, uh, Institute of Cost Accountants of India book. Please mark very, very important. So the first difference, the next difference is the incident and the impact falls on two different person for the indirect taxation. However, for direct taxation, the incidence or impact falls on the same person. Sir, what do you mean by this? What is the difference between these two things, incident and impact? Guys, incident means who will pay the tax? Incident means, please mark it on your book. Incidents means who will pay the tax. And impact means who will bear the burden of tax. Who will bear the burden of tax. In case of indirect taxation, 
there are two different parties one party will bear the burden of tax other party will pay the tax to government of india however in case of direct taxation both burden as well as payment will be on the same shoulders i'll give you the same example which we have just taken please see this example guys yes okay mr ram mr ram now in case of direct taxation one of the direct taxation is income tax mr ram will pay that income tax from his pocket so who is bearing the burden of income tax mr ram is bearing the burden of income tax question number 2 who is paying this tax to government of india mr ram is again paying the tax to government of india so burden and incidence both is over shoulders of mr ram in case of indirect taxation who is paying taxes to government of india the seller is paying taxes to government of india who is paying taxes to government of india the seller is paying taxes to government of india however is pocket of seller burning out of this taxes answer is no the pockets of mr ram are burning because of this taxes who is bearing the burden of these taxes mr ram is bearing the burden of this taxes who is incurring this expense mr ram is incurring this expense but who is liable to pay this tax to government of india seller is liable to pay this tax to government of india so the incidence of tax is on the seller burden of tax is on the um, uh, tax payer which is mr ram so there are two parties involved in case of indirect taxation however in case of direct taxation only one party is involved so incident and impact impact means burden who bears the expense incidence and impact falls on two different person in case of direct taxation incidence and impact fall on the same person if you are with me type yes sir in the chat box yes sir in the chat box yes all right so next difference what is the taxable event when is indirect taxation levied indirect taxation is levied in case of purchase sale manufacture of goods and provision of services so whenever you uh, manufacture something whenever you sell something whenever you purchase some commodity at that point in time indirect taxation is levied indirect taxation is levied at the time of purchase sale manufacture of goods or provision of services however direct taxation the taxable event is earning of income if you earn any income of you or if you possess some wealth if you have some wealth then direct taxation comes to picture so earning the taxable income or having wealth uh, turns into uh, the event which will uh, lead to direct taxation so direct taxation is not consumer based is not consumption based however indirect taxation is always consumption based when you are consuming some goods and services purchase means consumption if you are buying furniture for yourself if you are buying soap for yourself if you are buying this detergent for yourself you are consuming that particular thing so indirect tax is consumption based and direct tax is earning based or wealth based next levy and collection it is levied and collected from the consumers but paid and deposited to government by the dealer or the seller same point as first point incident and impact is on two different people so indirect taxation is levied and collected from the consumer but it is collected and deposited to government by the dealer or the seller so the incident and impact falls on two different person in case of indirect tax but what happens in direct tax levied and collected from the same person who earns the income and he only deposits it to government of india so there's only one person involved who is the direct tax payer in case of direct taxation simple as that indirect taxation nature very very important point guys just write over here very very important point out of all the points this point is very very important you need to understand it you need to remember it you need to learn it whole heartedly indirect taxation is regressive in nature indirect taxation is regressive in nature and direct taxation is progressive in nature direct taxation is progressive in nature please understand the difference between this difference between direct and indirect taxation it's a very very important difference guys that indirect taxation is regressive in nature direct taxation is progressive in nature please understand this difference very very important difference which you need to appreciate all right now mr ram earns income and pays taxes to government of india mr shyam 
earns income and pays the taxes to government of india okay there are two parties who earn income and pays taxes to government of india now mr ram is a super rich wealthy person super rich wealthy person mr ram earns crores and crores of rupees he is a very very wealthy person government of india tells mr ram look mr ram you are a very very wealthy person mr ram you are earning amazing money so please pay your taxes at the rate of say 30% just an example okay mr ram says okay i'll pay it on 30% i am already very rich paise ki tension nahi hai paise ki tension nahi hai i am already very rich i'll pay taxes at the rate of 30% no problem soon as the government of india turns to mr shyam mr shyam is a very very uh, low income lower middle class kind of a person who earns very very low income maybe he is a teacher who who supplies classes at a very very nominal rate very very nominal rate he is a teacher who supplies classes at a very very nominal rate if he supplies classes at a very very nominal rate then guys he definitely definitely is um, uh, deserving uh, for some concession in the direct taxation mr shyam is saying sir i am a teacher i teach students just like nikhil sir uh, uh, i teach students and i earn very minimal amount from my students please don't levy more tax on me government of india says no problem we will charge tax at the rate of 20% from you so this is the benefit which is derived in direct taxation direct taxation will charge you money on the basis of your earning capacity if your earning capacity is high they'll charge you a higher tax rate if your earning capacity is low they will charge you a lower tax rate and this is known as progressive tax regime progressive tax regime soon as you progress on your income chart your taxes also progress this is known as progressive tax regime now let us look at look at the example of indirect taxation let us look at the example of indirect taxation in case of indirect tax mr ram goes to the shopkeeper mr ram goes to the shopkeeper and he asks from the shopkeeper hey mr shopkeeper i want to buy some soaps please give me some soaps shopkeeper says yes yes you please have soaps okay shopkeeper gives soaps to mr ram shopkeeper says sir apart from the cost of the soap you also have to pay me gst suppose at the rate of 18% mr ram says oh i have a lot of money paise ki tension nahi hai i have lot of money so i will pay gst at the rate of 18% no problem at all i have lot of money mr ram is very happy it's okay he is okay paying money he says okay you please charge 18% as taxes from me no problem at all and at the same time this poor teacher who's teaching students at a very very nominal price and you must be thinking whom i am hinting at hint to pakad hi liya hoga tum sab ne samajh to gayi hogi main kya kehna chahta hu mere dil ki bhavnaye to tum samajh hi jate ho bahut jaldi samajh hi gaye honge who is mr shyam yes a very 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 nominal fee charging teacher and this particular teacher went to the shopkeeper shopkeeper can you please give me some soap shopkeeper says yes but you have to pay some additional taxes on the soap uh, mr shyam says how much taxes should i pay on the soap shopkeeper says 18% and mr sham says no 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 please please give me some concession i am very very poor i am very very nominal income person please 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 uh, uh, please give some concession to me and the shopkeeper says no nothing doing no concession on indirect taxes concession can be given on direct taxes by government of india but in case of indirect taxes no concession so even a poor person is paying exactly the same tax rate as compared to an a rich person so there is no concession therefore this tax is known as regressive tax what do you mean by regressive regressive means it makes poor more poorer it doesn't give any concession to the um, a poor people it doesn't have a soft corner for the poor people direct tax has the soft corner for the poor people that is the second um, uh, very very important dist distinguishing factor between direct and indirect taxes indirect taxes <clears throat> regressive in nature 
all person will bear equal burden of tax on goods or services consumed by them irrespective of their ability to pay please underline this word irrespective of their ability to pay however in case of direct taxation it's progressive in nature which means higher tax are levied on person earning higher income if you have higher income you will pay higher tax if you have lower income you will pay lower tax this is the benefit which is uh, forwarded to you by the direct taxation but this benefit is not there in case of indirect taxation guys you have already studied the slab rates in direct taxation there are slab rates in direct taxation okay direct taxation has slab rates people whose income is up to 250000 zero tax 2 lakh to 5 lakh 5% tax 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% tax above 10 lakh 30% tax this is the benefit which direct taxation has given to each one of its taxpayer this benefit is not there in case of indirect taxation in the case of indirect taxation all the taxes are at flat rate and this is how this is the distinguishing factor between indirect taxation and direct taxation next administration who administers indirect tax the central board of indirect taxes and customs handle the indirect taxation who handles the direct taxation cbdt central board of direct taxation handles or administers the uh, controversies or the entire concept of direct taxation that is the difference between direct and indirect taxation okay last examples of indirect taxation gst excise duty <clears throat> excise duty is still there on uh, some uh, products custom duty then income tax equalization levy wealth tax and the similar taxes are an example of direct taxation so these are the examples of direct and indirect taxation so yes distinguishing factor between direct and indirect taxation very 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 important concept from an exam standpoint please understand please make sure that this concept is very very clear in your mind yes sir so are you all with me yes please write in the chat box are you all with me yes are we in are we are we enjoying this session and are we all really determined to conquer this subject called gst if yes then please write a yes in the chat box and yes guys please hit a like button it's very very important to hit a like button okay in the chat box yes are we there in the chat and are we are we excited about the the session and are we excited about scoring good marks in gst yes sir we are very very excited to score good marks in gst and we will be scoring very high marks in gst yes that's the spirit guys that's the spirit of each one of you. yes yes i'm getting so many yeses and i'm loving it superb superb i'll yes yes sir yes sir i just love you guys your responses are amazing very much excited yes sir we will आप हम रिविजन क्लासेस दो हम आपको रैंक देंगे दिस इज एन अमेजिंग एंड एन अमेजिंग स्टेप बाय हर्षद 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 मेहता आई लव दिस लाइन एंड आई एम डिस्प्लेइंग दिस लाइन फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू गाइस एंड आई टेल यू एग्जैक्टली व्हाई टीचर्स वर्क डे एंड नाइट आई टेल यू एग्जैक्टली व्हाई टीचर्स वर्क डे एंड नाइट अफकोर्स गाइज इट इज अ सोर्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू फॉर ऑल द टीचर्स अफकोर्स इट इज अ सोर्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू बट मोर देन रेवेन्यू things like this excite the teachers most which harshad has just now written on the computer screen aap hame revision do hum aapko rank denge full support to all the students of cma guys i definitely guarantee you all the support but yes in return i need rank the all, all i need is rank yes koshish karenge kirti batra says chirag says we love you too i love you guys yes harshad is equal to Firoz sir, yes. All right, let's continue. Yes sir, let's continue. Okay. We are waiting to share the screen with you after scoring AIR. Oh yes, another comment. Wonderful. Yes, I am more excited than you to share the screen with you. Yes, Mr. Pediwal. One day I will definitely share the screen with you. You will definitely make me proud, and I have. Hundred percent confidence in it. Hundred percent confidence in it. आपने five accounts से like कर दिया. उज्जैल इसे 
I am liking my own videos from five accounts. No, no, Jal, that is not true. I don't have five accounts. Sir, I have grow, uh, scored great marks in past three years academically, but I think the motivation or drive is lowering down. Please tell the solution. Chinmay, just look at face of your mother. Just look at face of your father. And just look at your face. And just think, when this face will become CMA and will fetch a packet of package of 14 lakh rupees in CMA campus, what will be the smile on your face? And as soon as you get this smile on your face, you'll be self-motivated. So what we need is self-motivated. What we need is self-motivation. So have self-motivation in you. Chinmay Kulkarni, my answer to your question. All right. So yes, guys, constitutional validity, a very, um, uh, you know, simple um, uh, two articles which give right for any government to give you uh, taxation regime rights. 265 authority of law to collect tax is with government of India according to section 265. Then 246 has got three entries, union list, state list, concurrent list according to these three lists the uh, the liability or the or the um, uh, the uh, right to collect taxes are vested with government of india articles of constitution you need not know more than this that's more than enough this guys sources of law is not that important uh, utilization will be discussing shortly let me come on to the next important topic of our syllabus yes guys guys right very, very, very important. <clears throat> right, very, very important on this topic. What are the features? What are the features of indirect taxation? How, how do you classify indirect taxation? What are, what are the features? Okay. Sir got placed in Vedanta. Met you on day one in Delhi. Utkarsh Kaushik. Many congratulations, Utkarsh. Vedanta is a dream company for all the CMA students and all the students of the country. Many congratulations on making it. All right. All right. So features of indirect taxation. This is a tax on goods and services. Okay, we are starting indirect taxation. So first of all, you need to know that this is a tax on goods and services. This tax is not on income. It is on goods and services. Burden. The burden of indirect taxation is on the uh, consumer, but it is paid by the seller. Again, dual responsibility is there. Inflationary in nature, indirect taxation um, increases cost of the products because products become more expensive because of indirect taxation. So it has an inflationary effect. The entire economy, <clears throat> inflation rises if indirect taxation is there. So that is a downside of indirect taxation. Social welfare, it is useful tool to promote social welfare by checking the consumption of harmful goods. So guys, what government of India does is, it imposes very heavy indirect taxation on harmful goods like tobacco, like cigarettes, um, or like some components or some uh, things where, um, uh, you know, you, you, you have very harmful effects on the society. Government will lev levy heavy indirect taxes on them. So indirect tax is a way to curb consumption of those harmful things. But we all know that once you get addicted to those harmful things, even if it's super expensive, you don't uh, stop the addiction. But it is an attempt from government side to at least curb some part of the uh, consumption by increasing the prices. Wider tax base, base <clears throat> majority of the goods and services are liable to indirect tax with a very low threshold. So tax base is much wider in, uh, in case of indirect taxation. So base is wide of indirect taxation. Uh, you know, all the products and services are covered under indirect taxation. So the collections of indirect taxation are much heavier as compared to direct taxation. Regressive in nature, we have just now started. Um, uh, this will lead to uh, poor people becoming more poor. Uh, there's no consideration for poor people. Everyone has to pay taxes equally. So regressive in nature. No pinch. So the person who's paying indirect tax, which is the seller, uh, the indirect tax doesn't pinch him. It pinches the consumers, ultimate consumer who are paying the taxes. It will pinch him, not the seller who's collecting it from the consumers and is depositing it to government of India. An important concept, guys. An important concept. All right. <clears throat> Again, now, guys, all these, all these topics, please, 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 all these topics are very, very important. You cannot afford to leave even one of them. The ones which I think are unimportant, I'm already skipping while uh, doing this particular chapter. But doesn't mean that, you know, I, I'm, I'm predicting something that this will not come in the examination. Guys, your responsibility is to read each and every part of it. In the marathon, I cannot cover entire uh, each and every portion of it. So I'll be harping upon the most important topics during the entire marathon. Okay. Now, again, very, very important need for GST. What is the need for GST? What led to advent of GST in the year 2017? And you are very much aware, guys, GST is a new law. But why? What was the need of GST? Why GST was introduced in the year 
2017 that is the question which we need to answer now it is because of the two m's two m's two m's led to advent of or introduction of gst what are two m's multiple point tax and multiple taxes multiple point tax and multiple taxes this led to advent of gst let us share an example okay let me give you an example of this let us understand this point by an example because this is very very imp important guys multiple taxes and multiple point taxes <clears throat> All right. This is Mr. A from Gujarat. Mr. B from Delhi. Again, Mr. C from Delhi. There are three people who are included in my supply chain. And these three people which I include. Yes, absolutely. Very good word, guys. Very good word. Cascading effect. Cascading effect of tax. Which is tax on tax. Tax on tax. Okay. Now let us understand this concept with a very short example. All right. <clears throat> so Gujarat, send goods to B, Mr. A send goods to B. Value of the goods is 1 lakh rupees. The earlier regime where GST was not there, excise duty was there. Excise duty is levied on the manufacturer of good. A is the manufacturer of good. Okay. So excise duty say at the rate of 10 percent is levied 10,000 rupees total becomes 1 lakh 10,000 rupees this good is transferred to mr b when you sell this goods to mr b then sales tax arises so two taxes on same product both are indirect taxes tax taxation excise duty cost uh, sales tax <clears throat> suppose sales tax is also 10 percent okay hypothetically 11,000, 1 lakh, 21,000, 1 lakh, 21,000. Guys, what irony, what misfortune. A person, Mr. A, is paying taxes once on manufacturing of the goods, which is excise duty, which is again an indirect tax. And second time, in case of selling the goods, central sales tax, again, 10%. And now the worst part, worst part, while calculating this 11,000, I'm also incorporating 10,000 in this amount, which means I'm paying tax on tax. This is cascading effect of tax. I'm paying tax on tax. I'm paying tax on tax. So this 11,000 has resulted how? By multiplying 10% with 1 lakh and by multiplying 10% with 10,000. So this 11,000 is a summation of these two numbers. So I'm paying tax on tax. This is the cascading effect of taxation. Obviously, this is hardship on the assessees, on the tax players. This is absolute, absolute hardship on the assessees. Yes, rupees 1,000 is tax on tax. Ujjal is absolutely right. Very good, Ujjal. <clears throat> Very good, Ujjal. So taxes on taxes was a major concern for government of India. Now let's see what happens further, okay? This 1,21,000 product comes to Mr. B. Okay. And now Mr. B will apply DVAT. This is Delhi VAT. When the goods are supplied from one state to another state, that's an interstate supply. In that case, CST was liable, central sales tax. But when the goods are supplied from within the state, then DVAT, the local VAT, value added tax, earlier version of GST was levied. So here DVAT was levied at the rate of 10%. At the rate of 10%, DVAT was levied. Now, 1 lakh 21,000, 1 lakh 33,100. 1 lakh 33,100. Now, when 1 lakh 33,100 product reached to Mr. C, 1 lakh 33,100, this product is consumed by Mr. C. Assuming this product is consumed by Mr. C. So, <clears throat> The net effect, guys, the net effect. Uh, there can be some value addition over here also. I'm ignoring the value addition as of now. The net effect, guys. I am paying taxes on taxes. That is the worst part. I am paying taxes on taxes. That is the worst part. I am paying multiple taxes. 
on same consumption. Over here only I have paid three kinds of taxes: excise duty, central sales tax, Delhi VAT. Three kinds of taxes. I have to make three kinds of compliances: compliances with Delhi government, compliances with central government, compliances for excise duty separately. I have to prepare three returns of income. I have to prepare three charts. I have to prepare three uh, <clears throat> certificates of uh, payment of taxes. That was the state of affair before GST. And please calculate what is the amount of taxes that we are going to pay in this particular regime. Thirty-three thousand one hundred is the amount of taxes which we are going to pay in this regime. Thirty-three thousand one hundred. So now two problems in this regime: multiple taxes. What do you mean by multiple taxes? Excise duty, central sales tax, DVAT, three kinds of taxes. And there were more guys. Octroy was there. More taxes were there apart from these taxes. So multiple taxes was the was a problem. If you are charging indirect taxation from the SSC, please charge at one level. Don't charge at multiple levels. Please charge at one level. But there were multiple taxes. Secondly, there were multiple multi points uh, uh, taxes. There were taxes at the multiple points. Multiple points means once the taxes were levied at this point, another time the taxes were levied at this point, another time the taxes were levied at this point. So multiple taxes and multi-point taxes. Now one very important concept over here. Did the erstwhile concept had the concept of taking credits? Very difficult, guys. Please see this number: one lakh twenty-one thousand. One lakh twenty-one thousand. I am paying DVAT to the extent of twelve thousand one hundred. Out of this twelve thousand one hundred. Out of this twelve thousand one hundred, guys. I have. Already paid taxes on one lakh ten thousand earlier. On one lakh ten thousand, I have already paid eleven thousand earlier. Now, while calculating tax over here, I am again adding one lakh ten thousand to this number, and I am again charged to tax. Credits were not available in the erstwhile regime before GST. So, two major problems before GST was into picture. Two major problems. Number one, multi-point tax. Which means taxes were levied at a different point in time. The taxes were levied at different point of point of time. So multi-point tax. Secondly, multiple tax. Which means on same consumption of goods, on same sale of goods, on same purchase of goods, multiple taxes were levied. <clears throat> Excise duty, service tax, octroi, sales tax, DVAT, Haryana VAT, Mumbai VAT, Gujarat VAT, etc. etc. Multiple laws on the same person. He would be under a headache. he would say let me close my business i don't want to do business because all the time i'm spending on the compliances for various taxes in the entire country if your truck goes from delhi to chennai there are multiple states you have to do compliances of multiple states you are under a big 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 problem how to follow the entire law of the country so the concept of one nation one tax was introduced by gst due to these two problems now gst is one tax one problem one oh sorry one tax one nation one tax one nation one tax <clears throat> is there any lag guys please confirm if there is any lag is there any lag let me check the modem lag is better now no lag lag is fine now yes sir all right all right so these were the two problems with the gst regime because of which gst came into picture before gst this was the problem <clears throat> then another problem guys compliance burden compliance burden compliance means we had to file multiple returns of income we had to comply with multiple laws we have to comply with multiple um uh, uh, you know uh, uh, mul multiple laws and multiple regulations were applicable on us so compliance burden was a major burden which was there in the erstwhile regime in gst regime compliances were reduced to a very great extent partiality now this is a very very important point okay partiality partiality is a very very important point please understand what is partiality partiality means there are several states okay mumbai delhi 
चेन्नई गुजरात मुंबई डेली चेन्नई गुजरात देर मल्टीपल स्टेट गाइज इज देर स्टिल लैग इन द पिक्चर जस्ट वेट अक आई जस्ट चेक All right, the situation should improve marginally now. Okay, <clears throat> so there are multiple states like Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Gujarat. Multiple states have multiple, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, compliances to uh, uh, to be taken care of. Multiple place has multiple. Uh, gst which are applicable the rates were different in every place so say uh, mumbai has 15% rate delhi has 10% rate chennai has 12% rate gujarat has 8% rate now this was a big 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 partiality because the law were different in each of the states since law were different in each of the states every state had different percentages of gs of the earlier sales tax rate this was partiality businessman used to pick up these states on the basis of the percentage of um, uh, rates which is applicable in each of the state now to remove this partiality we required one law in the entire country and gst was that one law in the entire country to remove this partiality now let us read the features of gst yes gst one nation one tax and yes guys um, uh, you know the theoretical question might contain a question from this particular chapter theoretical question you might have a question from this chapter theoretical okay okay sir <clears throat> so salient features of gst what is the salient features of gst number one it's a destination based tax sir what do you mean by destination based tax guys destination based tax means the gst which was collected which state was authorized to take that collection the destination tax where the where the goods were being supplied to i will make this point very clear to you by way of an example please see my example please see the example so that's mr a he is the supplier of the good that's mr b he is the recipient of the good mr a was in gujarat mr b is in delhi mr c is also in delhi mr c is the consumer of good mr c is the consumer of good okay tax on consumption not production yes yes absolute tax on consumption so where i'm referring to production that tax is the erstwhile tax the earlier tax which is excise duty tax that was on production okay all right now please understand this concept of destination based tax okay <clears throat> mr a supplied goods worth rupees 1 lakh to mr b suppose gst is uh, at the rate of 10% 10000 is the amount of gst suppose i'm just taking a hypothetical figure okay the total value of this good is 1 lakh 10000 rupees this good reaches mr b mr b has got hold of this good okay this good is 1 lakh good which is there for mr b Mr B did some value addition in this good worth rupees 20000 incurred some expenditure on this good or did some value addition in this good worth rupees 20000 now the value of this good which was further transferred by Mr B to Mr C Mr C is the ultimate consumer is rupees 120000 of course 
Mr. B is going to ta charge tax on it, GST at the rate of 10%. 10% is 12,000 rupees. GST at the rate of 12%. 10%. 10% is 12,000 rupees. Okay. So now the question is, what is the ultimate price of this good for Mr. B? It is 12, 1,20,000 plus 12,000, which is 1 lakh. 32,000. <clears throat> what is the value of good for Mr. B? It's 1 lakh 32,000. Now, guys, the question is Mr. B wants to pay 12,000 rupees to government of India. Of course, Mr. B will pay 12,000 rupees to government of India. Mr. B has to pay 12,000 rupees to government of India. Now, Mr. B is adding this 12,000 rupees and transferring the material to the consumer. Mr. B has to pay 12,000 rupees to government of India. Now, while Mr. B is paying 12,000 rupees to government of India, Mr. B is asking for a credit of the tax already paid by Mr. A to government of India. Mr. A of Gujarat has paid taxes worth rupees 10,000 to the Gujarat government. Okay. This 10,000 was retained by Gujarat government. This was paid to Gujarat government. Now, Mr. B is saying that I am paying 12,000 rupees to government of Delhi. I am paying 12,000 rupees to government of Delhi. Please give me credit of 10,000 rupees. So ideally, Mr. B should pay only 2,000 rupees extra amount. Credit should be given worth rupees 10,000 from this tax to Mr. B. Credit should be given. But the problem is that this 10,000 rupees was retained by the Gujarat government. When 10,000 rupees was retained by the Gujarat government, credit of 10,000 rupees cannot be availed by Mr. B. Mr. B is going to further sell this to the consumer. Okay. 130,000 is um, uh, to be further sold to the consumer. Now, this 12,000 rupees is to be paid by Mr. B to government of India. Now, Mr. B wants to have a credit of 10,000 rupees and wants to pay only 2,000 rupees to government of India. Delhi government is saying, Delhi government is saying, is saying I am not going to give any credit because the 10,000 rupees which was earlier paid was paid to Gujarat government. Why should I give you credit? <clears throat> Mr. B is asking for a credit from government of Delhi. Mr. B is asking for credit for uh, 10,000 rupees from government of Delhi. And government of Delhi is saying, I'm not going to give you credit. Why? Because 10,000 rupees was retained by Gujarat government, not by Delhi government. So guys, this was the problem in earlier regime. That the source country, the, the source state, which used to, um, uh, you know, manufacture that good, <clears throat> which used to produce that good, that source state used to have right over the taxes which were collected in that state. But in GST regime, the right to this particular tax was given to the Delhi government. 10,000 rupees was given to the Delhi government, which is the destination state. This is the destination state. Destination state means the state where the goods have been transferred. Source state means the state where goods have been um, uh, delivered from. That is the source state. This is the destination state. So to, um, uh, you know, to curb this problem, to curb this problem, the the um, solution was that this ten thousand <clears throat> was not to be given to Gujarat government. Is what it was. It was to be given to Delhi government. So GST was a destination based tax, which means the destination tax destination state deserved the GST so that they can give credit. Now ten thousand rupees has been earned by Delhi government. Now Delhi government will give credit of ten thousand rupees to Mr. B, and Mr. B will pay only. 2000 rupees to Delhi government. This is the meaning of this word destination tax. Very, very important feature of GST, guys. Destination tax. So, Chinmay says your website link isn't there in the description. Oh, my website link is very, very easy. CSCSCM and Nikhil Gupta at the rate. Oh, sorry. CSCSCM and Nikhil Gupta .com. That is my website. It's very, very easy. CMA aspirant says, you also teach DST. Never knew this thing before. It would have been pleasure to learn GST from you. You please learn GST from me. That's okay. Now you're learning GST from me. Features and salient features, both are similar terminology. But you can say that salient is sophisticated English. <laughs> Argadeep Saha. Very good example, guys. Very good example. Okay. So guys, please confirm in the chat box if you understood the meaning of 
destination based tax please confirm in the chat box if you are clear with this meaning of destination based tax that yes whatever tax is collected it will be given to the destination state so that destination state can give input tax credit to the taxpayer this is the meaning of destination based tax please confirm in the chat box please write a yes if you are clear about the destination based tax <clears throat> so example let's read the example as well if a in gujarat produces goods and sells goods to b in rajasthan then in such case the tax should be levied and collected and should accrue to state of rajasthan and not to state of gujarat this is the concept of destination based tax yes 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 all right next feature next feature is one nation one tax single tax rate for the entire country whether you are a dealer of delhi mumbai gujarat chennai any state of the country rates will be same for you so no partiality no partiality rules and regulations will be same for you dual gst model there were two kind of gst which were imposed intra state and inter state intra state gst means where the goods are transferred from within one state to same state inter state means from one state to another state their igst was applicable so dual gst model was introduced all right now let us do a practical question guys a very simple one very very simple one very very simple one okay illustration number 1 and let's see which student gives me an answer before even i solve it yes sir we will give you we will give you all the answers okay illustration number 1 let's solve the question guys mr a of delhi supplied goods for rupees 240000 to mr b of delhi so mr a of delhi supplies goods worth rupees 240000 to mr b of delhi Mr A purchased the goods and services for rupees 2 lakh on which CGST and SGST of 18000 each is paid on purchases from Mr C so Mr C has uh, supplied the goods to Mr A Mr A has further supplied the goods to Mr B find the following total price to be charged by A what will be the price which will be charged by A what price will be charged by A obviously inclusive of GST amount guys okay who is liable to pay GST second question who will pay gst third question net liability of gst what will be the net liability of gst so let's solve this question guys and let's see if you are able to understand the concept well okay as usual i will always recommend you to please 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 write uh, uh, the uh, you know make some diagrams before solving the question please make some diagrams diagrams means uh, the chart where you will be showing all the transactions which are taking place okay so this is illustration number 1 this is illustration number 1 <clears throat> this is the transaction so guys the first one is mr c transfers to mr a then mr a transfers to mr b this is the transaction this is mr c mr a mr b so always in your examination also in your examination also guys always make such a chart always make such a diagram or such you know you need not be very perfect just uh, make circles and draw this ch chart it will be very very clear to you all right sir mr of delhi supplied goods of 240000 to mr b of delhi <clears throat> so mr a supplied the goods worth 240000 to mr b of delhi mr a purchased the goods and services for 2 lakhs on which gst was paid from mr c okay so mr a purchased these goods worth rupees 2 lakh gst was paid on these goods at the rate of 18% so gst at the rate of 18% which gives me a figure of 36000 was paid by mr a on these purchases okay okay so this is the total invoice value which mr a has to pay this is the total invoice value 2 lakh 36000 2 lakh 36000 ujjal has already given the answer brilliant ujjal anuraj has already given the answer very good anuraj good going guys good going okay now mr c supplied the goods worth rupees 2 lakh to mr a 
GSA at the rate of 18%, 36,000. So 236,000 should have been the, the invoice value. Mr. A is uh, further selling the goods to Mr. B. Now, Mr. A, of course, will again add GST at the rate of 18% on these goods. Okay. And 18% is a presumptive rate, guys. 18% uh, amount is 43,200. Okay. So what is the amount, total amount? Total amount is 2,83,200. Answer to question number one. Answer to part number one. Total price to be charged by A. The total price to be charged by A from B should be 2,83,200. Please write the answer, guys. Okay, A part. The total price to be charged by A from B is 2,83,200 inclusive of GST at the rate of 18%. Inclusive of GST at the rate of 18%. So the amount which will be charged is 2,83,200. Okay, sir. Next question. Next question is, who is liable to pay GST? Please, guys, answer in the chat box. Who is liable to pay GST in this particular case? I want the answer in the chat box. Please give me the answer in the chat box. Who is liable to pay GST in this case? Whether it is A or B. Who is liable to pay this GST? A is liable to pay this GST. Or B is liable to pay this GST. Answer in the chat box. Yes, Mr. A is liable to pay the GST. Yes, of course, C will pay his part of GST. But the current transaction is between A and B. And we are talking about A and B. So who is going to pay GST? Mr. A is going to pay GST. Very good answer. Very, very good answer. Superb. Brilliant, guys. Brilliant. Mr. A is going to pay GST. Please write the answer. Mr. A is going to pay the GST. Mr. A is going to pay the GST. Please write the answer. Okay. Now, guys, last question, C part. I hope you've written the B part. C part, guys, C part. Net liability of GST. Please tell me in the chat box what is the net liability of GST. Harshad Mehta is absolutely right. Chirag Khemani, right. Neha Jha, right. Shrey Sharma, right. Loshni, right. Jyotika, right. Kalyani, Sakshi, Kirti, <clears throat> MD, Luffy. What is the net liability of GST? Question number, part number C, net liability of GST. So the net liability of GST for Mr. A, net liability of GST for Mr. A is 43,200. His output, outward tax liability. This is known as outward tax liability. Okay. Minus the inward tax liability or input tax liability which is 36,000 minus 36,000. So what is the net tax liability which Mr. A has to pay? Net tax liability is 7,200. Perfect! Yes! You guys rock! You guys rock! You are the... You are my pride. You are my privilege. It's a privilege and honor to teach each one of you because you give me answers even before I ask for answers. 7200 is the net price which is to be paid, net liability which is to be paid by Mr. A. Net liability to be paid, 7200 by Mr. A. <clears throat> if you found this entire concept easy, please write easy in the chat box. If you found the entire concept easy, please write easy in the chat box. Easy peasy. Yes, easy peasy. Easy. Very easy. Easy peasy. Anurad says. <laughs> Ujjal says easy. Once she says easy. Easy in the chat box. <laughs> 
एम डी लफी हैज रिटन इजी इन द चार्ट बॉक नो यू जस्ट राइट इजी मखान उज्जल घोष शे शर्मा से And let me tell you one very important fact. If you are watching GST lectures for the first time, and if you have been able to understand this concept in the first time in the marathon lecture, because guys, in marathon lecture, we do not go in great detail. Okay, if you are able to understand this concept in a marathon lecture well, then please consider yourself as a shining star. You are superstar of CM industry, and you will rock the uh, profession, and you will rock the uh, examination for sure. Very good, easy. Halwa, Samya says easy. Very good, superb, superb guys. All right, let's move on. Then it says imports and exports. Guys, is uh you know um the GST is liable on imports and export. Yes, GST is liable on imports and export. Always as an interstate sale. We will not never consider uh, export and import as a intrastate sale. <clears throat> it will all be always be considered as interstate sale. Let me tell you beforehand, export of goods is known as zero rated supply, liable at a very very uh, uh, liable at a zero rate of GST. GST is not applicable on um, export of goods, zero rate supply. But on import of goods, yes, GST is liable. We'll be doing the customs duty chapter completely, and over there you'll be able to understand what is import duty. How is it levied, and how is it different from GST? But yes, the imports and exports are also eligible for indirect taxation, so they are very, very um, uh, eligible for indirect taxation. All right. Next, rate of GST. So rate of GST are from 0.5 percent to 28 percent. 28 percent is the highest rate of GST which is existing today. Okay. Now, guys, GST under the dual method, maybe either of SGST and CGST nature, or it can be IGST nature. Whenever we have intrastate sale, whenever we have intrastate sale, we levy CGST and SGST. Whenever we have interstate sale, we levy IGST. Whenever we have intrastate sale, we levy CGST and SGST. Whenever we have interstate sale, we levy IGST. Please remember these two terminologies very, very well. Kindly explain zero rate tax supply and exempted supply. Guy three, in my further lectures, when I'll be coming on the chapter of supply, I'll be dealing with these two words in great detail. What is the difference between zero rated supply and exempted supply? So wait and watch. I'm going to clarify this doubt absolutely crystal clear in my subsequent video lectures. Don't worry about that. Yes, a very very important difference. Okay, tax on value on supply. GST will be calculated on value of supply, and how to compute this value will be studying in another chapter. Then registration under GST. Every supplier who has made taxable supply is required to take a registration. A registration number is required to be taken by every supplier who is supplying goods or services under the GST regime. Input tax credit. This is one of the most beautiful features of GST. We are able to take input tax credit for all the taxes which have been paid. so there is no cascading effect there is no tax on tax and a smooth flow of input tax credit is available in gst regime now this utilization will be covering in our another chapter guys i'm not touching base on utilization over here because this is just a basics uh, lecture video i'll be covering this topic when i'll be doing uh, the subsequent lectures okay okay so got the point then guys <clears throat> the best part of gst is free flow of credit the best part of gst is free flow of credit now let me make you understand what do you mean by free flow of credit what is the meaning of free flow of credit okay please understand this concept what do you mean by free flow of credit this is mr a he is the supplier mr b he is the recipient of goods mr c he is the ultimate customer or the consumer so you can say that mr a is the manufacturer mr b is the retailer 
and mr c is the ultimate customer okay mr a supplies some goods to b at rate of rupees 1 lakh <clears throat> okay let us have one more limb guys instead of customer customer should be the last limb <clears throat> let us have one more one more element to it which is the shopkeeper okay or or one more thing can retailer can be put over here and this can be wholesaler so mr a transfers goods at the rate of 1 lakh rupees mr a transfers goods at the rate of 1 lakh rupees to mr b mr b is the wholesaler of this good mr a uh, levies gst suppose at the rate of 10% which means 10000 rupees so the total amount is 1 lakh 10000 rupees invoice is given to mr b mr b takes the invoice now for mr b the goods are for 1 lakh rupees mr b does some value addition in the goods because he is the wholesaler he will pack the goods or he will you know makes segregate the goods so that consumer can consume the goods 20000 rupees value addition will be done by mr b mr b has these goods worth rupees 1 lakh 20000 mr b is going to add again gst at the rate of 10% which comes out to 12000 rupees please understand there is something called a gstn which is the authority which collects gst from various people mr a is going to give this 10000 rupees to gstn as gst collections now mr b mr a gives 10000 rupees so mr a supplies goods to b and mr b gives money to mr a Mr. B gives money to Mr. A. How much money does Mr. B gives to Mr. A? One lakh ten thousand rupees. Out of this one lakh ten thousand, Mr. A retains one lakh rupees and gives ten thousand rupees to Government of India on their portal. Portal name is GSTN. Mr. B pays one lakh ten thousand rupees to Mr. A. Now, Mr. B has the value of goods as one lakh rupees. He adds a value to the extent of twenty thousand rupees in these goods. One lakh twenty thousand is the total value of the goods. On this, the GST is twelve thousand rupees. So the total amount, the total invoice value is one lakh thirty-two thousand rupees. Now please see the beauty of GST regime. Please see the beauty of GST regime. Mr. B has to pay twelve thousand rupees to government of India. But what will Mr. B do? Mr. B will do a calculation. Twelve thousand is the outward tax liability. Mr. B will reduce the taxes already paid by Mr. A, which is 10,000 rupees from this amount. And Mr. B will net net submit 2,000 rupees to government of India. So what is the amount of GST which Mr. B pays to government of India? Only 2,000 rupees and not 12,000 rupees. This concept is known as utilization of ITC input tax credit. This is utilization of ITC input tax credit. So, what is the amount which Mr. B pays to government of India? Only 2000 rupees and not 12,000 rupees. Now, let us see what happens at the retailer level. Retailer has the goods worth rupees 1 lakh 20,000 rupees because this was the amount which Mr. B had spent. So, Mr. Uh, C has the goods worth rupees 1 lakh 20,000 rupees. Now, Mr. C does a value addition on these goods worth 5000 so the total amount of goods are 1 lakh 25000 gst on this amount is at the rate of 10% 12500 so what is the total value of goods at c level at mr c level it is 1 lakh 37500 1 lakh 37,500 is the total amount which is invoiceable, which is billable by Mr. C to Mr. D. This is Mr. D. Now, Mr. C is supposed to pay 12,500 rupees to government of India. Mr. C is supposed to pay 12,500 rupees to government of India. But Mr. C will not pay 12,500 rupees to government of India. Mr. C will 
make a calculation, his outward tax liability is 12,500. But already, to the extent of 12,000, Mr. B has already made the payment. Mr. C will get a credit of 12,000 rupees. And Mr. C will pay only 500 rupees to government of India. Mr. C will pay only 500 rupees to government of India. Now, please tell me what is the total tax which has been uh, received by government of India. 10,000 from A, 2,000 from B, 500 from C. So, the total GST which has been collected by government of India is 12,500. Total GST which has been collected by government of India is 12,500. And please tell me, what is the total value of the goods which have been supplied or the value addition which has been done by each of the participants? What is that entire value? That value is 1 lakh rupees plus 20,000 rupees plus 5,000 rupees. It is 1 lakh 25,000 rupees. <clears throat> it is 1 lakh 25,000 rupees. So 12,500 rupees GST, 1 lakh 25,000 rupees worth of goods is supplied. So the GST rate in the total level is, level is also 10%. This is removal of cascading effect. This is smooth flow of ITC from one person to another person. And these are the benefits of GST. Or you can say the features of GST. GST doesn't levy extra taxes on people. GST doesn't levy cascading effect of tax on people. Tax on tax is never levied by GST. That is the beauty of GST. So let's come back to our concept. It says free flow of credit. Under GST regime, there is a seamless. Seamless means without any obstruction. Credit flow in case of interstate supply, which was not possible in case of pre-GST period, no credit was available for CST paid by the buyer. Under GST regime, seamless credit was um, uh, will flow as follows. The interstate supplier in exporting state is allowed set off available credit of IGST, CGST, uh, SGST, UTGST. We'll be uh, you know learning about this credit in a separate chapter known as ITC. I'll be taking in the marathon lecture. All right, buyer from importing state in the interstate supply can avail credit of IGST paid on purchase from the output tax payable. Exporting state transfers to center the credit of uh, uh, SGST, UTGST utilized for the purpose of IGST. Guys, all these points we are going to cover practically, okay? These are just theoretical representation of these points. Please don't get disturbed by these points. I will cover each one of them practically. Okay, now what are the taxes which are subsumed in GST? Yes, you, you should remember two, three of them. Remember at least four. Remember, at least four taxes which are subsumed. Subsumed means which are incorporated in GST. They were eliminated after the GST was invented on most of the products. <clears throat> excise duty, additional excise duty, additional duty of customs, CVD, service tax was eliminated, surcharge and cess was eliminated after GST was introduced. State taxes, state VAT was eliminated, purchase tax, entertainment tax, luxury tax, entry tax. Taxes on lottery betting, tax on advertisement, everything was uh, er eradicated when GST was introduced. This was the beauty of GST. Last but not all the least, the GST compensation says. What is the GST compensation says? So GST compensation says is a comp compensation which is provided to the states for loss of revenue arising on account of implementing GST till March 2026. Guys, after GST was introduced, many states, um, uh, due to the destination-based tax system, <clears throat> many states lost their revenue. Earlier, source states were getting this revenue. But now in the GST regime, destination state was getting the revenue. So many states uh, ran suffered losses. To compensate losses of those um, states, a uh, GST compensation cess was introduced to compensate those states which were at a loss due to introduction of GST. This is known as the compensation says. <clears throat> now someone is asking whether it's important to learn the theory part. Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Because theory part is going to be asked in the examination. Okay. Then, okay, this is done. Benefits of GST. Guys, benefits of GST. 
seamless flow of credit itc will be credited from one person to another uh, without any problem competitive prices gst eliminates all other taxes of indirect nature uh, and gst uh, rates are also same for all the states so pricing will be competitive in case of gst okay increase in revenue government's revenue will increase because um, you know more people will be under the tax net more people will come under uh, tax because of gst the connection the interconnection will be stronger because of gst so it will increase in revenue easy and straightforward tax structure it is easy and very very efficient one nation one tax entire country is facing the same gst so that is one another benefit now benefits of gst some specific benefits for the industry for the government and these are very simple guys you can read it i'm not going to take up in the class all right you must be aware about the history of gst in india the kelkar committee and the role of high powered committee which was there in drafting of gst those two points are very very important to remember out of this history otherwise uh, a question from history you know uh, can rarely come in the examination guys all right this is a chart showing what is the flow of events which happened in case of gst just read it once not very important just read it once that's it then amendment was uh, amendments were carrying out. Oh, okay very very important guys now we come on to a very very important point please write very very important over here <clears throat> gstn very very important <sighs> very very important yes theory is important in this chapter absolutely right so guys are you with me write a yes in the chat box if you are with me and if you are new on the stream please hit that like button that like button is to be hit immediately the like button is to be hit are you with me yes on the chat box many students have gone to sleep seems that yes suyash neha jha says a yes manvi anuraj sai naved loshni venkateshan jyoti anuraj says yes yes hans jain says yes very good brilliant guys please write very very important on gstn network gstn is a non profit government owned organization which administers gst which makes the website of gst on which gst is paid and they are responsible for transferring respective funds to the respective bank accounts of the states and the central government that is gstn it's a special purpose vehicle please underline special purpose vehicle spv it is like a common portal like a common website which acts as a clearing house and verify claims and inform respective governments to transfer the funds it collects the funds from the people and transfers to respective states haryana delhi everyone okay this is gst and very 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 important uh, gstn is developing common gst portal so a website is developed by gstn for registration payment return assessment etc <clears throat> it also issues a gst in okay goods and services tax identification number is issued by gstn so that each of the user has a unique identity each user has a unique identity mark okay so um, now this is the gst in which is issued by gstn network what are the functions of gstn very very important guys very very important from an exam standpoint what is the role of gst network the role is to facilitate registration forwarding returns to central state governments computation settlement of igst uh, whatever returns are there it forwards it to central state government it computes and settles the igst it matches tax payment details with banking networks it provides mis report monthly information system report it provides reports to central and state governments based on the taxpayer return information providing analysis of taxpayer's profile <clears throat> what is the taxpayer is he a company is it a partnership firm what is he, he, he uh, it gives information to the central government gstn running matching engine for matching reversal reclaim of input tax right how to set off input tax right whom should be eligible to claim benefit of input tax right everything is done by gstn very very important concept next is what are the salient features of gstn it was incorporated in march 2013 as a section 25 company 100% government owned company okay it was incorporated in march 2013 you need not remember the years guys don't remember the years paid up capital of uh, 10 crores functions as a common pass through portal for taxpayers common portal where all the taxpayers will come in and they will 
um, uh, feed their uh, information. They will feed their uh, information in that common portal. Submit registration application, file return, make tax payments, etc. etc. All these things can be done by the taxpayer on the common port portal of GSTM. Develop backend modules for states. Backend module where state can access their revenue. What is the revenue that state is getting? Okay, that is the responsibility of GSTN. Infosys Limited is managing this particular portal. Infosys is a big IT company of the country. It is managing this portal for government of India. Then more than 70 GST Suvidha Kendras have been established. More than 70 GST Suvidha Kendras have been established for administering this GST work in the country. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the first chapter, guys. This is the first chapter, which is basic concepts. Okay. Please don't go into depth of this chapter because this chapter is going to come only for three or four marks. And let me tell you, uh, December 2022. Okay. And I'm referring to the Shuchita Prakashan scanner. You should have this scanner handy. It will come very, very effective to you. Okay. December 2022. Question from this chapter. Discuss briefly the functions of GSTN. Very, very important. The functions of GSTN, I marked very, very important. Question number two. What is the functions of GST Council? The GST Council which is created, what is its function? GST Council. That is the second question which was asked. Then, what is GST? What are its advantages? What are the advantages of GST? That is the third question which was asked in December 2019. Apart from this, no other question has been asked from this chapter theoretically. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes. Guys, same goes for the future as well. This chapter can definitely, definitely uh, be a theoretical, theoretically important chapter for your syllabus. So yes, prepare this chapter well. Not much of practical stuff in this chapter. Practical stuff will come in the subsequent chapters uh, when we'll be studying about supply, ITC, etc., etc. So yes, I shall end today's class over here. Yes, a small class, but a very effective class where we have learned about the basic concepts of GST. How is GST enacted? How is it uh, useful? What are the benefits? What do you mean by free flow from uh, ITC? <clears throat> Everything we have discussed in this particular lecture. Yes, now we'll be meeting in the next session with more sections and more chapters of GST. Till that time, all the very best and happy studying. Bye-bye. See you in the next session of the marathon. And guys, before going, Please hit that like button. Please, please, please hit that like button. Bye-bye. See you in the next session.